Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. You may be wondering why there's a cooler on the back of my truck, and that can be explained in another video, but for this video, I also have an old PVC pipe here, and this is my elk hunting cooler, and it can be used for camping and all sorts of other things. Today, we're gonna turn this PVC pipe into cooler pods that are gonna nestle just nicely to fit this cooler and get the most maximized use of the space. It's also going to help insulate the ice so that we get a longer cold time in the cooler. I don't need it to be sub-zero in here. I just need it to be below 40 degrees and I want it to last the whole week or two that I'm elk hunting, probably even in September during archery season when the temperatures are warm, and for it to not leak. I've been using water jugs for years and the water jugs always explode. Even if you empty enough of the water out that it gives room for expansion, you always end up with water at the bottom and the last thing you want is wet meat. My hopes are that if we use the right chemicals, and we'll get to that in a second, that these pods will last longer, will retain their cool temperature, and hopefully have less, uh, I guess, what's the right word? Less dew on the outside. We don't want that moisture getting on the meat. And uh, ultimately, should take less space in the cooler as well. So stick around, I'll get to showing you what we're gonna do to make these things as efficient as possible. Okay, so here's the inside of the cooler and I have this foam divider. I'll put a link to that video in the description as well. Um, why waste your money on the ones you buy? These are super easy to make. This side is where I typically keep some like drinks and some orange juice and you know, some like if I'm gonna camp, I'll have condiments, etc. And this side is dedicated just for elk meat or deer meat. Usually I ended up having to pull that out when I get an elk to rearrange it all. And I'll keep a couple baskets on top. So that foam stays there and then I usually get a basket here, a basket there, and then an open entire cavity here. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna make some long pods that go in here side by side. I'm gonna make, they should have enough room. They'll kind of be like, two next to each other and one on top. And then after I get an elk, I can put one of those on top or two of those on top. And then on this side, I believe I'm gonna go, yeah, this is the longer way on this side, about 12 inches and I should be able to fit two in there. So a total of five pods, it should be about, I don't know, around five gallons, I think. We'll do the math on that. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start cutting this, uh, measuring the pipe ends that we're gonna use to get the perfect fit and then we'll replicate so that. So what you see here is two sets of chemicals and caps. And why do I have two sets? Because last weekend I got this crazy idea. I wanted to do it with local materials. So I went to Home Depot and I, I bought these uh, pipe ends, these PVC pipe ends. Um, they were not cheap. They were like 16 bucks each. I bought this, which is mostly propylene glycol. And, uh, but it does have some things in there I probably wouldn't want on my food if it spilled, whereas propylene glycol is non-toxic. And then this quick dam, which is made of the same chemicals, these crystals, which I'll, I'll explain what those are in a second. Uh, and I thought, well, I'll just chop that up and put a section in each piece of pipe until I went on Amazon after I got back from Home Depot and I found everything here in the non-toxic form without the <laughs> unnecessary added, uh, you know, water barrier and saved literally 50%. Um, you can buy a five pack of the same exact caps, same brand made by Charlotte um, for 30 bucks versus one of those is 16. So <laughs> when it comes to the pipes, a lot, a lot cheaper. And, um, and then I'm probably gonna have enough chemicals left over to use this in my garden. So these are called hydrophilic polymer crystals and they will absorb up to 400 or even higher than 400 times their size in volume. So one teaspoon of this should turn a gallon of water into gel. This is like way more than I need. I'm planning to use a little extra though because it has a higher specific heat uh, quality than water, which means that it thaws out or I guess it warms up slower than water. And so that, that if, you, if you know gel packs, they, they do a great job at conforming to your skin, but because they're gel, made with this stuff, they have a higher specific heat, they stay colder longer. And then I have propylene glycol, which I wouldn't drink <laughs> in the danger section or the warning section. It says just don't drink it concentrated. I wouldn't drink it anyway. This is basically all natural antifreeze. So if it leaks, I'm not gonna worry about it ruining the meat. Um, and I'm gonna use the proper amount of this to, what I'm trying to do is get the freeze temperature down to about negative 20, which is the temperature of my deep freezer. And you know, you just do the math to determine how much you want in there. We'll get to what that's gonna be on mine. 
Um, it's probably gonna be basically equal portions of this in each canister. Um, and by reduce, by lowering the freeze temperature, to, in technicality, I should be able to reduce the amount of swelling in the material. And we're gonna test that theory to find out just exactly how much of this uh, mixture I can fit in one of these pipes um, so that we know how much airspace to provide um, when we make them permanent. Oh, and before I forget, check the description below if you want the good price on these things as opposed to going double price at Home Depot. All right, so I did some math here. Three inches deep on these, and then there's a lip on the inside. That's where that the pipe's gonna stop. That's an inch from the end. So even though I have 12 inches in the cooler, I'm gonna cut these to 10 inches, and then there's a little bit of room for, hopefully that's all the room I need for swell. I'm gonna cut these ends off, and then I'm gonna make another flush cut. This first one's gonna be slightly angled because it's kind of canting the, the pipe. Here we go. So I got the first one cut and capped, and I'm just gonna drop it in here. Take a look. It has plenty of space to get this in. And I think what I'm gonna do when I do finally make these finalized is while the uh, glue is still wet, I'll actually use the cooler to sort of wedge them in and make them the perfect shape so I'm not banging around in there. All right, we're gonna use the OD regular clear PVC cement since this isn't getting inspected. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't need the purple. The purple is basically just to show the inspector easily that it's been cemented. And that stuff would potentially cause like dye to get on our food. We don't want that. So I'm gonna go ahead and this is gonna go on the inside of the cap and on this rim on the outside here. We're just gonna do the bottoms of these right now because we don't have the solution made up. We're just gonna do this to like get it ready for the solution. And we use a, a liberal amount of this because, you know, one time it's be good to be liberal with things is when you're trying to glue things together and you don't want leaks. So maybe that's a little overkill, but I don't think that's gonna leak. Oh, come on. There we go. Made a nice little spagooshy looking sound in there. We'll go ahead and do that for the rest of them. Then we'll get onto the chemistry. All right, so the conversion of this to make the right amount of gel is a teaspoon per 550 mil, which is basically a half liter. So um, I'm gonna make a half a gallon of mixture. And I did the math to come up with 25 milliliters. It's gonna be a half. And I'm gonna go ahead and pour that in here. We're gonna use the bucket to do this instead of the pipes because then I could just mathematically calculate what percentage it rises when it freezes to know how much I can fit in those pipes. All right, now conversion on this was 90% water to 10% pro propylene glycol. I'm bad with pronouncing the chemistries, excuse me. And uh, that's gonna be roughly six ounces to 60 ounces to get us to our half gallon here. And we'll pour that in. And then we're gonna put the rest water. And it's probably better to do the water before this so they can't, those crystals don't just soak up poly, uh, propylene glycol. All right, I decided to use hot water because I um, didn't wanna wait as long. Propylene glycol, I think it should absorb faster. We have these little gel blasters. And those gel balls, if you're looking for a fast way to get those soaked up, use hot water. Um, where are we? Perfect, right at the 64 ounce line. Cauldron stick, thank you, sir. You screw that up. Make sure that that propylene glycol and the water is thoroughly stirred. All right, we let that sit for a couple hours and it looks like it did its job pretty well. Um, I went ahead and it was slightly below 64 ounce line, so I marked that right there. And we're gonna go ahead and just get this into the deep freezer and let it sit um, probably a couple days to see what happens, see if that, that level rises at all. All right, let's, uh, let's get it in there. Check back on it a little bit, a couple days. All right, let's see, this should be frozen. Let's see what we got here. Look at that, it's like 
snow. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, you could see it rose. You could see where that 64 ounce line is. We're at over 80. That's about a 20% difference. Um, and I guess I didn't put enough. I need to check my tables because I guess I didn't put enough of the propylene glycol in there to prevent it from freezing at that temperature. I'm going to go look at uh, some internet math and see what I can figure out. So direct back to the drawing board. Um, I just put up a slide that discusses the percentage of propylene glycol mixed with water to prevent freezing. I did double check my freezer temp and it showed 16 degrees below zero. So I think 20 below zero is a safe bet. It looks like I need to be doing like a 50-50 mix to keep this in gel form. So I'm gonna give that a try here. We're gonna go 50% propylene glycol to 50% water and we'll see if that freezes. Okay, that's our propylene glycol. I'm gonna put the sodium uh, poly blah, blah, blah in there <laughs> and then top it off with hot water. Okay, gonna give this a nice good stir. I am really curious if it doesn't freeze. And if it doesn't freeze, if it, if this, if this water level rises, or I guess just say gel level, that will be really cool if it doesn't. Um, then I'll call that mission accomplished and go ahead and get on with putting things together. All right, there's our latest concoction of the chemicals at 50% dilution. Right at that same line I made there, just about. I'm gonna go ahead and throw that in the freezer. Here we go, fingers crossed. And just a small side note, it uh, took a lot longer to absorb that. So um, that uh, sodium polyacrylate absorbs water by itself a lot easier than when you mix it with the uh, propylene glycol. Um, so just give it more time. All right, there we go, 16 below, and look at this. It is gel. <laughs> that is awesome. Let's see if it uh, expanded much or at all. Right at 64 ounces. That is sweet. And I actually doubled the amount of um, sodium polyacrylate in there because it, just, it was absorbing so slow. And I was wondering also if that was going to affect it. Turns out it did not. So I'm going to go extra liberal on the polyacrylate, sodium polyacry polyacrylate concentration um, because it does increase the gelatinous factor which is how it retains the cold that cold temperature remember the specific heat thing all right so what do i have here i don't have the the pure uh poly polyethylene glycol shoot i can't remember the name already i'm losing my mind guys anyway i'm going to use this instead because uh, this is going to be a secure connection i'm not at all worried about these things bursting because there's going to be Probably no, if not maybe even a little bit of negative pressure because I have water boiling in here. This is Well, it's not boiling anymore, but I boiled the water. I boiled two gallons. I'm going to use two gallons of this. It's supposed to protect even more against temperature. And I have a little bit of the other stuff left if I need more than four gallons. Uh, I have my sodium polyacrylate. I have my caps and I have my cement. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the sodium measured out into these... Um, I mean, we'll get my containers, the pods, and then I'm going to mix these items and pour them till they're full, run some cement on them, get the caps on, and then I'll put them in the, in the cooler and that space fits perfectly. So it should hold the caps on while it's curing. Uh, and same thing on the other side. All right. Maybe that's a little overkill, but, uh, that's what the big ones are going to get. And I'll do a half of that in each of the small ones. Okay. I have two gallons of water. I'm going to put two gallons of, uh, propylene glycol in there or splash if you will um, at your own risk you know I would recommend if you're really worried about the toxic aspect of things then use the pure propylene glycol use your own risk on this it did say on the safety data sheet the same thing if you drink it concentrated just drink more water so it didn't say anything about having to go to the hospital if it's ingested um, and the reason again why I'm why I heated up the water, one was to allow faster absorption of the gel, um, but also it's going to create a vacuum as that temperature cools. It's gonna help pull those lids on. And then when I freeze it, if there's any sort of expansion, it will do the opposite. It will help 
balance out that pressure from freezing, which I don't think will be an issue anyway, but at the very least, it will ensure a tighter seal on these lids. And I'm only doing four gallons because I just don't want to deal with a overly full five gallon bucket, even though I think we're closer to five gallons with our total requirement. Look at that, almost to the T, four gallons there. So I probably actually have closer to six gallons, which means I'll use that other jug of propylene glycol on the other four there. Once again, I'm doing this as my second coat here, two coats on both the pipe and in the lid. And that should just push on. Probably gonna wanna push off initially because there's positive pressure being added. But, ooh, yeah, that's gonna be a little tough because uh, <laughs> until that cools down, it's not gonna suck it in. I'm kind of stuck, what do I do? So, <laughs> Sometimes it's just hard to think through all these things. Uh, I am sitting on the pipe. Uh, that's gonna hold the lid down until the glue sets. <laughs> Maybe if you guys could think of a, a better solution to what I'm experiencing here, please leave it in the comments below. I'm curious what you guys come up with. This does seem to be holding the lid down in place and it should set in about 30 minutes. So I guess I'll get to watching some YouTube videos while I'm just sitting here. Okay, well, I got it to set kind of temporary, good enough. I don't see anything leaking out of there. We'll find out, at least I'm using dyed fluid. Um, and I, I have that sort of just sitting for the next 15 minutes, pressed up against there. This one, I couldn't get quite pressed on as far as I had hoped because it was just, uh, it, it caught me off guard how it happened. So my hope with these, I'm gonna push these on as hard as I can and get them to the bottom. If I have to do some modifications to my foam here to allow for the extra, extra space, that's what I'll have to do. I'm gonna think of it. I'm gonna put this, this is still like 10 below. I'm gonna use that to help cool this and maybe that'll cool the liquid and help pull that lid on faster than just the air. One last thing I didn't mention, like make sure that rim is dry and then apply acetone. I'm applying acetone, maybe it's overkill again, but this will make sure that there's no grease or anything that would interfere with the bond on both the top of those pipes and on the inside of these lids. So that actually worked <laughs> better than I expected. Um, the cooling of the temperature inside allowed me to not have to sit on top of this as long. I noticed that it was able to stay put on its own after just about a minute or two. So that's nice little thing. By some do. sort of miracle, those last two fit down in the bottom nice and snug. And this one fits right on top and there's not gonna be any movement. So I'm really happy with that, but I am not going against a soft bendable or squishy surface on these. So I'm gonna measure the length of these and how basically how far I was able to compress those and then cut off whatever amount of this that I have to, to ensure that I can get these in that way and not have to deal with um, sizing problems. So those longer ones expanded by only a half an inch, um, but that would not work on these. Um, in fact, I expect that these are going to be even harder to press down because there's less total volume of, I don't know, whatever's in there to compress uh, or the, you know, the expansion of the pipe from pressing. So I'm going to cut a whole inch off of these and hopefully that's it. It's kind of sad of losing an inch of volume of frozen stuff. But, you know, I do have those bigger ones. I'm going to have a total of six gallons of ice. That's pretty solid. So but keep that in mind, if you're gonna make these, you're gonna lose some volume if you make them out of these shorter ones than if you did the longer ones. Well, I got in a little fight with the miter saw this time. Uh, it's pretty hard to stabilize a round object on a smooth bench. So I'm gonna do this, and I probably should have done this in the beginning, use my reciprocating saw on this with a PVC blade. Um, word of the wise, watch this whole video and learn my lessons of mistakes before you start this. Much uh, easier, it does leave a burr, so that will need to be filed down. And I do have some gouges from the miter saw there, but I'm not gonna worry about those because we don't have any real pressure in here. And these are the ones that are carrying the pure propylene glycol. Are they all cut? That's one of the rings I cut out. I just wanna show you the blade I'm using. I love these, they work on just about everything. Uh, the Diablos, and they are stronger than the Torch by Milwaukee, even though they look almost exactly the same. I'm just going to go ahead and get a file and clean up those burrs. Well, unfortunately, we have a wounded soldier. The uh, the one that got bit by the saw didn't quite make it. However, we end up with a little over five gallons of 
ice pods and a lot of cooler space. And I'm just picturing like how this will go. I'll freeze all these on a trip. Once I shoot an animal, I can keep, you know, four of them on the bottom, put two on top or whatnot, keep the meat off the bottom um, and keep the keep some on top so that that cold air can drop down through the meat and keep it cold. Or I could even put like a wood uh, base and put all these on top. Um, I may not even need all these, um, but they certainly fit really well and I don't expect them to explode and I'm going to go ahead and test those out. If you guys like that video, I, please follow along because I do plan to use these. I'm going uh, hog hunting in a couple weeks with my son in, in Oklahoma and we're going to be bringing back some meat, almost positive. So we'll give them a shot, see how long they last, um, see how they do with uh, keeping the meat from getting wet or, you know, from whatever condensation. Um, and I'll be using them again in the summer, but I'll make another video about how they work with actual field use. So please subscribe, hit that alert button so you can stay notified when that video pops up. And if you like things like this, it's not just like I'm an ice man. I just do like lots of handiwork and I'm a carpenter by trade. So if you want to stay in the, in, uh, in the loop on what I'm up to, please do subscribe, share, and like the video. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. I'm curious what you're thinking. Have a great day, guys. Take care.